Hi, friends and golfers. Eric Silver, EGS Golf Academy. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about resilience and kind of mental fortitude in golf. And, you know, this is kind of a tough subject for some and um, probably for all of us because it takes inner judgment of self of what we are doing in golf, um, how we're analyzing it, and um, it typically gets some kickback. So, I'll first start off with um, myself, just to let you know that I'm okay with it. Like, so when I um, grew up playing, I wasn't any good until probably 15 or 16. I went from I went from um, a 12 to a plus two in about a year. And let me tell you how that happened, because I was about 16 by then. I started playing at four or five. So I'm older. And when I grew up, um, the, the golf swing was basically, you know, um, swing the handle, swing the club head. Nobody was talking about, okay, by the time I get to, you know, P2, this is where we should be, risk should be like this. I was very analytical. I am very analytical. And I would ask coaches, well, where am I supposed to be here? Like, what should I do here? And they, everybody thought I was crazy for asking those questions. And I, you know, I would get made fun of um, by coaches and stuff. And they thought it was just so funny that I needed to know that. And like, maybe I shouldn't even be asking those questions. So Fast forward to um, me finding David Ledbetter, and it changed everything. So all my answers were, I could find the answers to everything. So now I could feel confident about my swing. So what would happen to me when I golf is I'd go play, and let's say I start off really good, but I could never fix myself because let's say things go bad. I had no idea what, what could be happening in the golf swing. Now, everybody's not like that, but I am. So it's like I'm hitting it right. I didn't know why. I had no clue. So how do I fix it? I couldn't. Um, so once I was able to understand the golf swing so much better, especially mine, I excelled. But when I want to get to this other point, and this is, there's a reason I said that, and I have to be like, oh, look how cool I am for doing that. It's not that at all. I wasn't ever a great putter, ever, okay? So my friends and people I played with back then would all tell you, I, my career got cut, for those of you who don't know me, very short, cut short very early. Um, about 21, I was done. Surgeries already and everything on my back. Um, it just went really bad, quick. Um, so that's a whole nother story, <laughs> but, um, I would always, I wasn't a great putter. Okay. So put a lot of pressure on my game to, uh, make, um, my long game for 50 yards, hundred yards, 150. I, I felt like if I didn't get it close, I wasn't going to make it. And it's probably a lot of truth to it. So, but here's what I want to get to. I didn't realize this till years later. So people would call me like the best striker that I've ever seen hit golf ball. Like, and I'm not saying that to be like, I'm anything great. That it, it just goes for the story. Um, but so this is what I got to do. I got to say, so I go shoot, let's say a 69 or something. And I always had this backup or let's say I played bad shot like 72. I always had this backup of my putting to go back on. Like, well, you know, I hit it great. It's just my putting. So I had this excuse built in always, okay? And I didn't know this back then, what I was doing. Of course, I was super upset about it, but I always had this thing to go to, like, hey, look at me. I, I hit the ball great, but I can't putt. So, hey, you know, so I, and like I said, I didn't realize that till years later. So I hear excuses all the time from people on why they don't perform whatever it is, okay? And what I usually tell people um and this could sound rude or whatever is like excuses don't matter like we need to get rid of all excuses like just because the group was slow in front of you is not an excuse to have a poor round okay what is an ex what what does that mean it means you need to learn how to handle that better and to me this is why i always say golf is life because of the mental part okay and i'm not gonna i could go on for hours on this because i've this is to me well, to me, along with how we learn has been the biggest subject that I've studied by the last four years, um, trying to understand more about the students, understand more how we think, how we learn, how we process stuff. But, you know, excuses, we find them very easily. And if you notice in life, we'll find them very easily, too, for reasons we do certain things. OK, and golf seems to capture a lot of them. So, you know, I'll get a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm not trying to be this, or I'm not trying to be that. And I'm like, okay, well, why? Or, you know, I don't say this, but it's like already setting that expectation up so they don't have to reach that level or whatever it is. Um, I'll see this in data gathering. You know, maybe somebody will be fired up to gather data at the beginning, and guess what they do? They stop it. 
because they don't want to look at it. It's not pretty um, in their mind. Okay. But to me, it's to me, I look at it and I'm just like, all it is is telling us what we need to work on it. To me, it doesn't matter if you shoot 95, 85, 75, or 65. Like to me, it matters if you want to get better, if you don't care and you don't say anything, then I, I, it doesn't matter. then that's fine. But for those of you who want to get better, um, is that, are you working on it and working on it correctly? And, and, and the problem is if I walk up and down the driving range and look at it, it's rare for me to see somebody practicing correctly. Most people have a seven iron driver, whatever they grab, and they just hit tons of balls in a row. They don't do anything between each shot. So if I go, just quick explanation, if I go like this, oh, whoa, look at that shot. And then I immediately go, that's pretty good. Like I grab one up, that, that was even long for some people. And I go, what did my what did my brain just learn between those two? Nothing. It had not. What did it have to go on? I didn't tell it I was trying to do anything. I didn't rehearse anything in between. I didn't say, okay, I'm going to try to go like this. I want to feel. I have something I'm working. On. I'm trying to stay on my front foot. Whatever it is, I'm trying to work on, and at least relate something to it. Now we can get in a whole other topic of telling ourselves things because most people are telling themselves the wrong things. Let me get back on topic about the mental fortitude and resiliency part. Okay. So what I typically see in golf is that people will, they'll, they'll quit and say, they'll give themselves reasons for quitting. Like, I don't have time. I don't have this. I don't have that. So the thing is, if you know how I teach, and you know, my system, I tell everybody they can reach incredible levels in 15 minutes a day of strict practice, which is usually going, whatever we're working on, say it's like, say we're working on um, just rotation turn, it'd be doing this, you know, for 15 minutes of a day to teach our body how to move. Now we may do one of those. And then the next one may be, okay, how do I get that in my swing? We go one, I'm going to try to go slow with it. Okay. So then I may go back to the other one, but it's 15 minutes of, and I have feedback. There has to be feedback every time you know I'm doing it correct. So, so that's if somebody's going to do that stuff, you're going to you're going to get a lot better. Okay, it's just everybody does that does it with me. I haven't had a person that follows my feedback of 15 minutes a day and that 15 minute trip a day ever get worse, or even stay the same. They get way better. Okay, so um, but as far as fortitude and resiliency, we have, excuses is one of them. We have to get rid of them and not give ourselves any excuse. Like. Here's the thing. It's like expectations, right? If you play once a month, okay, think about this and you don't practice at all. What expectations should you have when you go out on the golf course? I would say, you know, depending how athletic you are, what you did in the past or whatever, it, everybody's different, right? But set some realistic goal. I mean, for some people, if this is their eighth time playing, it, it could just be contact. I'm going to hope to make contact every single time. Okay. But most of the time, people set unrealistic expectations. They watch golf, think, oh, this is how it's done or whatever. So find expectations that are realistic and don't set them by your range session before you go. That's what a lot of people do. They'll have a decent range session before you go, and then they set their expectations by that range session. So what's kind of interesting is you'll find out that when people have a terrible range session, Typically, they'll have a much better round. Why? Expectations go to zero. And then the, the other way, it's the same thing. Okay, so how can we build more fortitude and more resiliency in golf so that we don't... Golf has a big problem with people quitting. They quit on themselves about getting better or they quit golf. Okay, so if we know that it's not a lot of time... See, I think problem, problem, part of the problem is time. People have been told that, you know, you have to spend... Um, you know, eight hours a day hitting balls or you have to go to the range every single day. And that if they've heard that, then they're just so skewed um, on what is re realistic to what they have to do. You know, I've heard people say, oh, now you got to hit 200 balls a day or do this. I'm like, no, you don't. It, it, that's so untrue. So when you understand what we really need to do to get better, then I think a lot of light bulbs go off and like, oh, it isn't really what I thought. I don't have to go to range every day and just beat balls. And most people, when they go to range anyways, they're getting worse because they're not, they're not practicing the right thing for sure. They don't have the right mental image of what the swing even is. And then their analysis of what's wrong with their swing or whatever is usually completely off. It's, it's this thing where let's say I um, slice the ball. Uh, or let's say I'm trying to get more power. So they look at Rory hit and they go, oh, well, the key has to be like, he looks like this. I don't look like that. So the key must be in the hips where they don't, they don't realize that the, the hips do this as 
it's a part of the golf swing. Rory just doesn't go to the top and go, woo, like just like that. It's not at all what happens. The hips don't have this innate power in them. And actually they're stalling in the swing. They, they start swing down, then they're, they're stalling out. So it's like they, the reason they open is this push back from toe to heel. They open up and boom, it just gives us more room. But the just to say opening the hips is power is completely wrong or women would be probably hitting it farther since their hips move faster than men's anyways. Um, so it's a lot of that perception, right? Um, I just say with fortitude and resiliency is getting rid of excuses, being real with your data. Okay. And realize that no matter where you are, no matter what your work schedule, I work with a lot of doctors that are very, very, very busy. They figure out how time to get better. Okay. And if it's, I tell everybody, if you can't do 15 minutes a day, you know what? Do 10 reps of whatever you're working on. Maybe it's just this getting back down to the ball here. Maybe it's like, I got to make sure I get here instead of like throwing it like this. So I'm going to swing to the top and make sure I get here at better angles right there. Or I'm used to coming over the top. So I'm going to come to here in a better position and just do 10 of those a day. It, unbelievable how well it works. So to me, if you want to get better, there's no excuse unless you have zero time. And if you have zero time, then you have to just set your expectation there. You can't, you're not going to get any better. Okay. So but for those that you want to remove excuses, get the data, find what is wrong in your game. And you're going to find out in golf that it's just, it's a lot like you are as a human being. Um, I've learned that with myself a hundred percent. Like um, where, where's our point that we give up? And here's the other thing. Like when I go look at the range, how I told you most people are doing it wrong. It's that I tell people that they're just, all they're doing is exercising. So if you go to the range and hit balls like I just showed you, one ball after the other, you're just raking them in, you're not practicing golf. All you're doing is exercising, okay? You can't count that as time practice because your body has no clue what it's doing. And the other thing is if you do block practice, which is just hitting that club over and over and over and over, it's shown that it has no ability to transfer over to the round. So first off, remove that. Next step is you have to find out what's wrong with your golf swing, okay? Why are you not getting any better? Most likely you're not gonna find it on YouTube because I haven't found somebody yet who's analyzed their swing correct and they all watch YouTube to try to find the answer. And here's why, and maybe this will help you. If you look at your golf swing and say it doesn't look like somebody else's and you're like, oh, okay, I think I'm doing this or my friend said that. Well, the problem is this, okay? Wherever the issue is at that you, maybe you think it's at, it's usually three to four steps behind that, okay, where it was caused, okay? Like, what, what is the, what is going to be the fix for, I haven't heard yet, for what is the fix going to be for hitting way behind? Where does that get fixed? Is that just right here we fix it? Because most people fix it then by going when they hit behind, they go up with their body. But then look what I have to do with my hands. So the ball's here, right? So I'm going to get up with my body, right? This is going to do it. And then if I go like this, look, I'm not going to hit behind anymore. But look what I did. Hands are behind it like that. And I'm scooping it huge. And you know what, that may work a lot of the time, so you don't hit it fat, but you just created a huge problem that's gonna be hard to fix. So this is hard to deal with at times for a lot of people, this question, okay? Don't let it be hard for you. Just do it as the way I look at it, as just maybe data, and then learn from it. If you find out that you are, um, I'll tell you, that for me too, I find, it, I find it a challenge at times to do certain things with practice, okay? If I have to practice something out here, let's say I'm, I'm practicing something, I know that my tendency is to maybe not want to do it for as long as I have to. So my mind is pulling at me to stop. But I know that about myself, so I don't let myself do it, okay? I, let my, I make myself keep going because I know my tendency is, I think all of our tendencies, I mean, according to psychologists, not mine, we have this thing in us to be lazy if we could. So to me, if we're practicing, is it exercising? Yes, but it's still very lazy to me if you know the correct way to do it and you're still doing that because you're choosing. It's much harder to be focused and practice and say, you know what, I'm going to go through every step this way. I'm going to make sure I set up. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to do my practice swing and make sure, okay, I'm going to come down right here, make sure I'm because I've got to be in front of the ball, hold that finish so I can really feel it. Maybe do this to really feel it once or twice. And then I'm going to come up here and you're going to do that. You're going to go probably through only 20 balls in 45 minutes versus the normal whatever one and a half you go through but then i'm gonna go here check it how am i is that good positioning did i move my body to get it 
you know, so doing stuff like that is how you get better. And that's the stuff that everybody fights and struggles with. And I know because I asked before people start my programs and everybody will tell me that I've committed to 15 minutes. I know I didn't do it. And why? Because this is hard. Okay. It's hard for us as humans to do, but if you want to get better in golf, if you follow my principles, 15 minutes of practice a day, you will see results that are mind blowing. Okay. But you have to commit to that. And I tell people 15 minutes, it could be 25 reps of something twice a day. Okay. So don't get upset if you're lacking in one of these things I talked about, or you really are, don't have the resilience that I've talked about in golf, fix it because also it's going to help your life too. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. Eric Silberg, EJS Golf. Thank you.